Hey everybody, welcome to Backyard Birds 101 with me, Jen, from the Dairy Public Library. And I'm going to take you through a couple of species of birds that you'll probably be able to see even from your window without going outside. Or if you have a bird feeder, you might have a bunch of them coming to your feeder or just in your like lawn and backyard area. And if you can't see them, maybe if you're not in an area where you can look for birds, you'll probably still be able to hear them. So I'm going to show you what they both look like and sound like. So hopefully you can enjoy them as they are coming into the breeding season and getting really vocal and active and it's, it's kind of exciting. So the first bird you're probably going to see all over the place and hear all over the place is the American Robin. And they are bouncing all over the yards this time of year. They love grass because that's where their preferred food is. And you'll hear them usually making these high-pitched chirp noises, which is their, their call. But in the mornings, you'll often hear them making their, their song. And it's this kind of whimsical back and forth, forth like churly, churlu, churly, churlu, as they are. It sounds kind of like they're skipping down the road really excited um, about being awake in the morning. And if you listen for them, you'll probably hear them right this time of year. It's a great time of year in the spring to hear them singing as they're establishing their new territories as they've come back from, from down south. You probably won't see them at a feeder, though, because their favorite food is um, insects. Then you'll see them bouncing around lawns, picking up worms, but also spiders and crickets and ants and basically anything crawly they will they'll eat it, which is kind of nice. If you don't like bugs, you can just keep the robins around and they'll, they'll eat them. Another bird you'll probably see a lot, particularly in the winter, because they're just so striking, is the northern cardinal. They're really cool looking uh, because they're just vivid, vivid red, at least the males are. And you've probably heard them without realizing it either. They have like a, they sound a little bit like an anime ray gun. They make a pew pew noise. But, uh, kind of descends, it sounds really odd. Or like someone trying to whistle to get your attention. And they have a couple of variations on this call. So they can go up like this one. And it'll be really fast. Or they can also do like a descending, this is the one that really sounds like an anime ray gun. Pew, pew kind of sound. And they're all over the place this time of year and they're a lot of fun to watch because they're a little bit aggressive so they get kind of huffy with other birds but they're also a little bit paranoid so they'll get scared of you really easily if they think you're watching them and the males are this bright red color but the females are a little bit less spectacular but they're often a little bit more curious and you'll see them around bird feeders of being a little bit less jumpy and nervous probably because they don't stand out as much but they still have a really bright red crest and a bright red bill and uh, a lot of red on their wings and their tails. And another really vivid bird you'll see this time of year is um, because they're coming into their, their uh, spring plumage is the American goldfinch. So on the left over here, this is a male. And on the right over here, this is a female. Um, both of them are usually this time of year, pretty vivid yellow. The male has that bright, the, the, excuse me, that dark black cap over its head. Um, and they both have the really vivid like black and white wing bars that make them obvious. You'll hear them fairly often. They sound kind of burbly, um, right, really high pitch. They can have a lot of variation in their calls though, which can make them a little bit tricky to pick out. My one professor used to say that it sounds like they're saying chewy, chewy. And if that helps you remember, maybe that's a good way. But what helps me be chewy, chewy, chewy. What helps me pick them out is they actually have a call that they make while they're, specifically while they're flying. And it sounds like this. It sounds like prachickery, prachickery. At least that's what the, the ornithologists say. I kind of think, and you can, you can debate me. Particularly, particularly, I think it sounds like they're saying potato chip, and it helps me remember. 
so potato chip. <laughs> but if you hear that call, you'll often hear it while they're flying around in groups. And if you're not sure what you're hearing, just listen for the pachicory or potato chip. And you can usually pick out that it's a goldfinch. And then usually if you know what to look for, you can see the bright flashes of yellow as they kind of flit around through bushes and trees. Black-capped chickadees are also all over the place this time of year. And they're easy sometimes to pick out because they say their name as they sing. So they say chickadee dee dee um, in their call. And you can usually hear them doing this back and forth at each other. Chickadee dee back and forth. Because this is actually the call they use um, when they're kind of agitated. A lot of times if you walk under a tree, a chickadee will start scolding you with that call. That's not actually their song. Uh, their song sounds kind of like they're saying Phoebe. You might have heard this and not realized that this is also a chickadee. And again, maybe I'm just always thinking about food, but I don't think this sounds like Phoebe. To me, it sounds like they're saying cheeseburger. And that's all I can ever think of when I hear them singing now. Maybe they're just hungry too. But it helps me remember. Chickadees, they're hungry for cheeseburgers. Red-winged blackbirds are probably the quintessential sound of springtime. Even when it's still pretty cold out, you can hear them in marshy places, anywhere where there's some water. And they'll usually start establishing territory, even like as late as late February, or as early as late February. They have those bright red, the males have those bright red shoulder epaulets. And you can usually see them in big groups, particularly in the early spring when they're trying to figure out where they're all going to live. The females aren't bright black like this though. They don't have the bright colors. They don't actually look very similar at all. They're kind of drab but they're usually around the groups as well. So sometimes you'll see a bunch of these drab birds around one or two that are the really vivid black with red. And you'll know that those are red-winged blackbirds. Another bird that you'll probably hear more than you'll see is a song sparrow. They are kind of drab little guys. They don't stick out as easily. They don't have bright colors on them to point them out, but they have a very noticeable song that they sing. And it, you can usually pick it out even if you're not sure what you're looking at. If you can hear them singing, you can identify them. It's this series of chirps and then like the descending cascade of sound. Um, some ornithologists say it sounds like maids, maids, put on your tea kettle, kettle. And it might be a way to help you remember. So they have kind of a melodious song to them, which is why they get called the song sparrow. So you can listen for them this spring because they're starting to get their territories established right now too. Another sparrow that I'm hearing personally quite often this time of year is the white-throated sparrow. So they get their name from their white throat, but they also, you can also pick them apart from other birds because they have these really vivid stripes of black and white on their head, as well as these really noticeable yellow eyebrows. Um, and they sound a little bit like someone's whistling. So some people say it sounds like they're saying old Sam Peabody Peabody or oh sweet Canada Canada. There's one outside my house right now that hasn't quite learned its song yet so he just kind of says old Sam and stutters off. <laughs> so you'll sometimes hear them they won't be quite perfect as the 
the young ones are still trying to figure out how their song goes. I've got a couple more birds, and this one, the purple finch, is actually the state bird of New Hampshire. So these guys are really vivid red, but not like a cardinal. So it looks a little bit like someone dipped them in raspberry jam. So their heads are really bright, vivid, and then it spills all down their front and sides. And they have another kind of babbly sounding song. It sounds a little bit like they're kind of hyper. But it's kind of melodious. And you'll be able to pick it out if you hear it. <laughs> now, a lot of people say when they see this one compared to the purple finch, they're going to say, what are you talking about? That's the exact same bird. It also looks like it's been dipped in raspberry jam. What are you talking about? And they are very similar. So house finch and the purple finch look really, really similar. They're both finches. They even sound kind of the same. So this is what a house finch sounds like. Another really babbly sounding song. But there's a way to tell them apart that's not actually nearly as hard as it looks. So visually, the house finch has a couple of differentiating features from the purple finch. They look really similar. They both look like they've been dipped in raspberry jam. The house finch though, starting behind its eye and going all the way down along its sides and on its wings, it's not red. It's just got the, the red spilling on its belly and on its back. And the purple finch, all even on its wings, its back, its belly, all of it is kind of that same raspberry jam red and their heads are usually much more vivid so the house finch kind of looks like it's got makeup on where it's put it in certain spots on its face and the purple finch has kind of got the red all over it and the other thing is their song so the house finch kind of sounds a little bit like it's been um maybe having a sore throat so if you listen, it's got these buzzy notes in its song. You hear the buzzing zzz sounding zzz buzz in its call. They're called zri notes in its song. I'll do it one more time so you can hear it again. So they sound really buzzy and they have that zri, that, that, that rolled R kind of sound in their call. The purple finch has a really smooth song. It's still babbly, but it doesn't have those raspy zri notes to it. So you see the difference. There's none of that, that zri note in the purple finch. Maybe the purple finch has been taking better care of its voice. And the last one I want to show you is a sound that you probably have heard quite often. Especially in the mornings. If you've ever heard this noise outside. And if you haven't thought about it before, you might notice it now. And it's actually not a bird. A lot of people think this is a bird because it's usually coming from a tree because it's one of these guys. Um, Eastern gray squirrels will often, particularly in the mornings, but also throughout the day, get into arguments over whose patch is whose, and they'll make these squeaky groaning noises at each other as they kind of get off my patch, com complain at each other to, to leave each other alone, or they're just communicating with each other. Where's my friend? or there's a cat down there and I don't like it. So if you hear that groaning, squeaky sound, it's not a bird, it's a squirrel. So I hope you have enjoyed this so far. If you have other birds that you're curious about, feel free to send me an email uh, and I'll put together another one of these soon so that 
you guys can look for more stuff outside as we're as we're cooped up inside there's still lots going on outdoors and you can at least listen to it if you can't see it going on and we'll see you next time so thanks for joining me